Hi, and welcome back to the Truck and Scribe. Today, I am making an ephemera holder. Here's what it looks like. I have not decorated it yet, and in this video, I'm not gonna decorate it um, any more than what it is. So, I have little um, places to put your ephemera. I used, um, what is that called, vellum? So this first one has Tracy Fox in it. The second one is chapter one. I still gotta put more in there. And then this one is mine. The little digitals that I did, labels and stuff. And what I did was I took and put these tags on there. This one has actually one of my, my little things on it. For Tracy's, I put her thing on there and I gotta find the chapter one to put on here. But that is what you get if you sit through this hour long video of mine. Um, it's an ephemera holder and I cut out a lot of it. So, Hopefully that will help. And thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoy it. I've been watching some YouTube videos this weekend and I watched one by the paper junkie. She did a um ephemera holder to hold all her ephemera and of course I don't have any sitting right here. So, to put stuff in. So, any other day I'd have this laying around everywhere. I don't know what's going on today, but to put in a little, I don't know about these little hearts, but you could put tags in there. You could put these hearts in there. Um, these would go in there very good. But, Definitely, I know where I put them. That's why I can't find them because I made these two little, these little things the other day that have my ephemera and I can't see it. So when I saw um, the paper junkie in her video, I thought, well, I need to make one from for myself so I can see it. Um, I will definitely link below to her page and what I'm using today is going to be some scrapbook papers that pre-cut to fit in here so this is a folder um, I thought I had another one laying here but it's just a folder that um, you would put the manila folders, but these have are nicely printed. I took in what I did was figured out where I wanted my spine to be. So it'd be like this, and this will be the spine. I took in, um, folded it, marked my lines, and folded it back like this where it looks like it's closed. I did some stitching along the edges all the way up. And then I did stitching right here in the middle for the spine. While doing that, he gave me two more pockets right here, which I really like um, to put in a lot of stuff. So I've, I've been, I've had this sitting for a while. I was actually, I made Mary with value printable a Alice in Wonderland journal from a file folder just like this. Um, so this is going to be my cover. What I did to measure my cover Open a new ruler. 
was I measured from about where the spine is. So right here is where it'll start. So if I do it like this, to where I wanted it to come out. And I decided on four and a half because it would come to right here. So when these are sitting in, it'll sit kind of like that. I don't know if you can see it very well. So I still have a little bit of room. I'm, I might decorate it up and put some lace on the edges before I actually start putting the ephemera in it. But I'm gonna set this to the side. Um, these are just pages out of scrapbook paper right here. The Paper Studio, I think I got this one at Hobby Lobby and it's got some beautiful prints. I'm using them for a summer beach journal that I'm working on. This also a printable from Mary. I'm doing this one in blue. So she's, I'm just doing a preview real quick. Um, she's got these beautiful digitals. This is the scrapbook, some scrapbook paper. This is her digital with the, the sun. And I, what I did with this one is I distress inked it with corduroy blue, I believe. I've got a stenciled little pocket and there's some of that scrapbook paper. So I gotta fix this little ruffle right there, but this is more Mary's work. I love this little girl. She's so pretty. Um, more scrapbook paper. This one, I know I'm just totally showing y'all this other journal, but I had to show you this um, digital by Mary. I took and sewed a panel of lace, and I just sewed it on each side of that fold and made a cover. And I will be going over these when I get ready. Um, when I get, get a little bit more done, that's another of Mary's prints. I put a mandala in the middle of this one. Um, some ruffled fabric, some, some of the scrapbook paper I sewed in those pockets. So, I mix the scrapbook paper and the paper prints, and I may do that in here. I'm not sure because this, well, this is eight tall, so it would fit paper size if I, I don't know. And anyway, I'm folding these in half, which I am not a good cutter with the cutter I have. I need my big one, but one day I'll get it. So that's four, five, I think I'm going to do seven because I have them already cut. And these are going to be taller than regular. Um, well, no. I don't know why I keep thinking they're taller, but they're not. So I could put some of these pages from that scrapbook in there. I've got some. But first, what I'm gonna do is kind of figure out how I want these to go. I like this one. I'm gonna put white pages together. Do I wanna do that? Because when the ephemera gets in there, you won't be able to notice the difference. So this one, and this one. And then these three I'm going to put together. So, I have some vellum that I just bought on Amazon. It's the cheap little sheets of vellum. And I went beforehand and did some cutting. 
I tried a little bit today to get um, prepared. I'm in, in your view, so. So I cut some one inch, one, are these all, no. I got one inch pieces of vellum that I'm gonna put up at the top. These are all right around two inches, or uh, inch and a half. These are bigger. And then these here are just a little bit bigger than those. So what I'm gonna do, I think, and I'm just gonna turn this over so we can see the, and I'm gonna do it on all sides, this side and this side. But I'm gonna put the small, the big one here then I'm going to put that one right there. This is a little bit different size. And I'm gonna put the tiny one, so that'll give me four to a page, I think. And this would hold these. Let's see what I got. This would hold these bigger ones that I have. Or even bigger than that. I think these are chapter one. So that would be good. And I have these huge ones from, um, I don't know if I put this one up or not. I'll have to look. So I've got these two from. Tracy Fox. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I cut that at um, four and a quarter is the page size, or four and a half actually. So I cut nine inches by eight, roughly. This here is two a four and a quarter, one and six, one and five eighths by two and a four and a quarter, one and half, and then this one's at one. And what I'm gonna do is just glue it, um, glue them in from the bottom. And I'm using just a little bit of glue, not much, because it will warp the vellum. But the ve and you can use scrapbook paper to put these on. But I want to see my um, I want to see what I've got in there. So, and as you can see, it will. Well, the land on you. Put this little sheet up under here to um, catch some of that glue. It's just a Teflon sheet that I got from. I have a heat press, and it came with three, so I took one and cut it down. But you can find these on Amazon also. They work great because you get glue on them or paint on them. And you can just wipe them off. But if you um, get it on your cutting mat, it's a little bit harder. So I'm going to try and line these up, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm always needing somewhere to put this. And I'm trying to just squeeze it just a little bit at the top. I didn't on this bottom one. Maybe it'll let me. And, um... need to make some of these and put in my shop don't so I've got two different shops I have an Etsy shop which is I've had open for years um, shop name is the truck inscribe same as my um, YouTube videos and 
I have started a Go Imagine shop also that I'm wanting to put in and try to move stuff over, but so far um, I don't have much in there. And Go Imagine isn't quite as big as Etsy, but um, we keep having people come over there and see our work and realize that it's there. That's the biggest thing is just trying to get people over there. Um, and it's Go Imagine. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can go and check it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this one over here. I'm just, while it's open flat like this, it makes it much easier to do these. And you can sew these in. I, I mean, if I were to get really technical and try and figure out how to get them matching on both sides because when you glue them in that will the sewing will be on both sides of the page so the up and down probably wouldn't be that much of a problem see I could sew straight across here and it may not I may be able to do that I'll have to look at it And I'm beginning to like the um, the sewing machine and paper. I didn't at first. So I'm going to do this with all the pages. I'm going to go back on the other side and show you. And I'm trying to just squeeze it just a little bit before that dries. So it gives it some, some little bit of room. So if I were to measure, and like I said, I could do the sewing machine. I could go down and, and measure it, like put one here and, and make lines. And I may do a template on another book later. I don't know. Sounds like a good idea because I have a lot of labels that I need to. And I would like to be able to sew them in. Maybe when I get done with this one on one of the other pages, I will try it. I'll go ahead and do both of these on the bottom here. And you could, which I didn't do, I don't know if I can still do it, just to give it a little bit of color. Grab. On this side here, I'm just gonna a little bit just to give it I don't like that white just solid white I'm not sure I think I mixed up my colors though oh well so on the next one I'll try and get this a little center but see even it laying over each other looks pretty good. It gives it a layered effect. And I can't really get down here because I already put those on. So, let's see, these are the next size. Oh. So I've got my sizes mixed up, which I don't have many of the, the bigger ones. So I'm just trying to check and see if I have any of that on this page. Because I'm going to cut some more of these. I can see already because so 
that makes it show up just a little bit better. It decorates. I, I'm beginning to like this um, stenciling on the backgrounds. And I did actually scan some that I've stenciled. And I actually like um, printing those out to put in books and in journals. They're just like a digital, digital print. So you could scan this here and, and put it in. I had wanted to show you guys how to make um, some tags but there's a book I want to read first because the book is an old Reader's Digest condensed version from 1970. And it is The Great Lion, a novel on the life of St. Paul by Taylor Caldwell. I wanted to show you guys how Melina did her tags like this see this one if you look on the back you can't see it here it says the line of god so i'm kind of cutting it off this one's one i made last night and when i trim it right there it's going to cut a little bit off i didn't even think about that but i want to read this book first i read the story and then i'm going to be showing you how to do those the way that I did them, which isn't much different from Melina's, to be honest. I get so much from all these creators on, on YouTube that it's, I don't think anything is my, my idea, to be honest. I think it's everybody's idea, and they just are such a great group that everybody, um, Everybody just shares their knowledge. So there is one full page done. A few more to go. So I'm going to let this one dry before we put anything in it. So I'm going to get this page done and I think I'm going to turn you guys off for a few minutes. Maybe I'll remember to turn you back on. Um, and I'm going to get some of these done so we can sew them in our signature and you're not just sitting here listening to me talk and watch me do the same thing over and over again. So, I'll be back in a minute. I'm back. I am actually working on my last um, page. Gluing all these in. I got down to four to a page. This one is two inches. This one is two inches. So both of my bot well the bottom row is a two inch strip. Let's see. And this one is an inch and a half. And I haven't put any ephemera in here yet, so we're gonna see how this works. This one I'm going to put a little closer to the bottom. And we may have to play around on the other side. I don't know if I'll cut any more film or not. So what I've been doing is each side on the page as I go ahead and um, put the coordinating 
vellum on, but of course that's up to you if you wanted to do um, all the way up one time and then come up this side. Or if you choose to do yours like I'm doing. So the other side, I'm going to start out with those two inch pieces. Actually, I'm going to put this one up here. Is this one one inch up? That's close enough. So this weekend is Memorial Day here in the United States. Um, tomorrow, we honor our soldiers. So we have the day off from work. Most places closed down, uh, except for like grocery stores and things like that. People do a lot of um, cookouts and and stuff. I know up in North Carolina, I've been praying for those people because there's supposed to be storms coming through and I haven't checked to see, but um, the beaches are closed. So they decided not to let anybody go swimming. So since I have these this size, I may go ahead and do those, I think so. So I'm gonna use these bigger ones on this page and that's one thing you can do with your pages is just use sizes that you want you don't have to use my sizes or anybody else's but you know take into consideration what size your ephemera is and um, how much you have and stuff like that and I'm sure as I get places to put this that I'm going to be cutting more I'm going to put the big one. Cutting more from the digitals that I have. And also, not just the digitals, but I have the Tim Holt stuff too that I want to put in. And what I would like to do is have a... Um, have a book for each one. But what we could do for the time being is put um, some little tags on there. I've got these. I've got some others that are already, so I could use some of these and put names on them and hang them from the sides over here, which sounds like a good idea. Um, first I want to see how am I gonna those will kind of poke up because the vellum just does that so I'll make sure our pockets are all going in the same direction see this one's kind of crooked but that's okay this one's just for me I do like those cherries. I don't know which one I want to go first. I like the orange. So what I could do is poke a hole in, or not poke a hole, but put a grommet hole in this corner. I got this little thing. I think it was at the Dollar Tree. And they're um, housewares, if I'm not mistaken. 
here I'll get my nails done soon. I've got two of those little trays and I really I like them for putting little stuff like this. But so what we can do is take one of these dangles and I had some beads out. I don't see any of the second. Um, I think I'm going to use some of these pretty ones I got on Amazon. Let's see. Maybe a little green one. And I've got some little like safety pin um, bulb pins. I could do like that. That would be pretty cool. And the good thing is you could actually you could do it on every page if that's what you wanted. Um, every signature. I think I'm going to do signature. Um, I'm going to put my glue for a little bit. So the grommets help reinforce this little corner and I probably should put more than just a little grommet in there, but we'll see how this works. It may not be a problem because it's in a book. I'm using the 1 8 inch side and I'm on C3 and these are not the greatest little grommets they're hard for my hands but we may not have a problem with them I'm actually gonna wait and put these tags on after I get it in the signatures Like I said, depending on, I think the scrapbook paper may be just fine, but if if we needed to, we could um, reinforce that little section right there, put like an extra little piece of paper scrapbook there, but I really think it'll be okay. I don't know because I've not made one, but um, yeah, that would be cute to have those hanging out like that. What do you think? Oh, I like that. Well, let me go ahead and grab a couple more. And let's see, that one was orange. This one's more of a green. So you could actually put more than one tag on these. And you could put more dangles and stuff. Um, and I'm going to put more as we get them sewed in. Like I said, I may wind up going ahead and putting them on each page. Who knows? Putting some lace on them or something so since they're getting like that. I do really like it though. So if you guys um, like this and you don't want to make one yourself, if you'd like me to put some up in my shop, definitely leave me a message or um, send me an email at admin at the truckinscribe.com. And I will see about getting some put up there. Because I'm definitely going to make me a few more. I made these dangles yesterday, day before. I think I, have, I did put up a video for them. So, yeah. 
we've got these, which I might change those. They're the same color. So now what I'm going to do is put all this up and get it up. It's time to get out our needle and thread. So what I'm going to do. make a template usually on the three hole pamphlet stitch I don't but I will so this here is actually the size of our signature see it, it fits I'm folding it in half to get this first one and then I could do like maybe an inch from the top and bend it. And you can use this template over and over if you use the same um, size of a paper. So right here, here, and here is where I'm gonna put, punch my holes um, and put head for the head of the book. This is just book binding, or you could do top and bottom. But see, then if you did the, the T, you'd have to make sure either way you were going T, B, H, T, if that makes sense. Or am I confusing you? I'm sure I'm not making a whole lot of sense. So what I'm gonna do is take this And I'm going to put this in here after I bind my papers, see? And I probably could do them all at the same time, but I want this stuck down in there to where this is in the crease. And it wasn't just then when I was trying to do this. So I do have a cradle board and I see it. Sometimes we won't use it. I did have a piece of styrofoam that I salvaged the other day. So make sure that your, your signatures are going the same way again. Then you take and you poke just a little hole right there on all three and watch your fingers because it will hurt if you miss. So that's one signature that we have gotten. These are all going up and they're in the way that I want them to go. Because you know me, I would get them in here backwards, but let's see. So then put this in here again. Let's see if I can get a better view. And you need to make sure your top is at the top of your page on every signature, or you will possibly mess up your um, alignment for when your signatures go in the paper. So I got one more. And you would do the same here for a regular to, to bind a journal. And I'm going to try and show y'all that when I'm working on this summer journal that I'm, I've got going. I'm just poking more holes. So what else I can do with this, and this is where I really do need that styrofoam or something under it, make it easy. So this just came in the mail the other day. I had um, a package, and only I'm going to take these off until I get done. Why they're not getting in the way. Uh, 
going to try and make, uh, show, put the link to these in this video. It's getting, I, mean, I keep saying I'm going to do a short video when I think about it. And then it winds up being an hour. But crafting, you know, is not a fast thing sometimes. Like these dangles, I had not planned on that. So we go out that way. Yep. So we'll put those over there for now. So I have my three signatures, and I got them a little backwards, I think. I do. Oh. Okay. If you look right here, there's holes. This corresponds to those holes. So what I want to do now is I've got this styrofoam piece that came in a crash. I want to measure this, which this is almost half and half. So what I could do is just go across. I could fold this in. This is the easy non-measuring way. Not that it's going to be perfect, but you can get your ruler out and measure. The paper always seems to fold so nicely. Okay, so this ends the middle. We'll put that, that's going to be the front because our head is at the top. So now to fit these three signatures in, we need one here, a set of holes. Another one there, and another one there. So what I'm going to do is put this up here. I'm going to line this up and actually clip it down. And I'm going to line it with the bottom. And then I'm just going to poke. Yeah, that's about right. This is just a little tad bit bigger, but... Our lines are in there, so I'm just poking holes. Not real big because um, the needle's not that big. We just need the thread to go through. And like I said, you can keep this if you want to make more the same size. Since you've already done all your math and stuff on it, you could just keep it and write on it... Um, ephemera journal template and I would write the the size which is 8 by 4 and a quarter by 8 when folded so now the way I measure my my string or what I was told to measure it with was um, one, two, three for the length. But, and I'm going to go ahead and use this piece. I'm going to put my my needle. Look, y'all. You know. I can't keep up with nothing. I'm sure y'all see it sitting here. Did I drop it? Probably did, huh? There it is, way up there. How's it get up there? So I don't know if I'm gonna use, well, I will use that just to, to show you that you can use And I have wax linen thread that helps. Um, it's a little bit stronger. But you can use any thread. But I've just, like I said, I, I've, done, I've done book binding. And I'm going to start from the back just because that's me. I'm going to go in the middle hole right there. And like I said, again, make sure your top is up because this is going to be my top. I'm going to go through here. Now you can go top or bottom on this because it is only three stitches. 
I hope you guys can see because I'm not doing a very good job of finding that hole. I'm sorry. I'm half blind today for some reason. There it goes. When I was doing book binding, they, they were teaching me to be able to do this without looking at the other side. So you would have your your paper sitting here and your pen you'd go from this side in and then go back in. So you were kind of doing it from side, from like you couldn't see it. And that about drove me crazy because I do like seeing it. But it is more efficient if you can learn how to do that and you're doing it professionally. Um, and you know what I did? I should have moved this up just a little bit instead of being right there on the bottom. And this would help if I actually... Um, if I had clipped them together, it probably would have helped a whole lot, but I didn't. So see here, I'm going to be a little bit over on that bottom because of where I put that hole, but um, I might trim it down. So... You go in up here, go all the way down to the bottom, and go in, and then you come back in the middle. And you pull your strings. You got one string on one side of this and one string on the other. And you just make a square knot, which I'm probably not doing, but... Okay. So I'm just going to leave these tails here. Yeah, see, it's going to be a little bit, well, it's going to be right at that. I may trim them down just a little bit, but I may not have to. So here's my second one. What I'm going to do is like Miss E. She, <laughs> I thought this was a genius thing, because I had never thought of it in all my book binding. Um, saves thread, too. And she just leaves it hooked. She doesn't cut it from the spool until she's done. So. The one advantage of making your holes bigger is that usually you can you can see them I can see this one on the outside but I'm really struggling today with that inside one so I should have probably poked it bigger And then, when you do pull your your thread through, pull it the way that the thread's going, not against it. Because if I had to pull it this way, it would have ripped my paper. I'll get this one down here. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble today. Because y'all are watching. Might be what it is. So, you can do some really neat designs with this kind of binding. You could put more holes in it and do a crisscross all the way up. It does take um, some thinking about it. It's been a while since I've done that, but I've um, made leather journals. And I'll have to get some pictures out and put one in here so you can see it. So. 
What I'm doing is just trying to tighten this up. And if you wanted dangles to go down here or even up at the top, you could um, leave your strings a little bit longer than what I'm leaving them. So, this is going in pretty good, but you know what I'm gonna do this time is I am gonna poke those holes a little bit bigger so I can see. I'm holding, vision's going these days. So now let's try that, see if that helps any. One thing, I need a needle minder because I lay a needle down and I can't find it. So one secret that I was told, and it's probably not a secret, but this was back when I was doing hand quilting and learning how to do it. The lady told me that the eye of the needle, when the machine punches that hole, that there is a way that it goes in, kind of like this signature you see right here, the bigger hole on the out on the outside is opposed to the end. So it's the same kind of concept with the the needle and threading it. Is there is a, a right way, I guess you could say, and a wrong way, or an easier way? I don't know that it's wrong if you can get it to thread easier. So, got two of them. So, where are the other two? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut this out. I don't know. This is crazy. Did I not get it wrong? Oh, it's there. There it is. And when you're filming it, it's you're filming in awkward conditions too, trying to make sure that you guys can see. So it's not as hard as it looks like it is to, for me today under normal where I can twist it to where I can see it better. I think I got that. I did. So, try not to get your thread when you come back through. Because if you pierce your thread, it's going to want to twist together. And it does make it a little bit harder. I'm pulling, well, I was pulling the right way. And generally, so I don't lose my needle like a while ago, I try to go ahead and re-thread it because that wax holds that needle pretty good. And I hope this actually makes sense when I get done. So, you know what I did? Well, no, I didn't. I'm upside down all the way around. put these dangles back on. I'm going to change that one to maybe this one. You know what? I did put it on upside down. I thought it was. So what you do then is you go back and you turn it around. So, I don't know that I'm going to have enough 
brown that. So you see, things happen when you're sewing. Surprisingly, these have not taken that long to make. Um, the majority of my time has been spent in putting those in. Of course, my cover was already sewn when I started, so that was a little bit of time. And these signature sewing, you know, I'm just having a time today. My scissors I was cutting duct tape earlier. Didn't even think about it. I'll put this back up and save this other thread because it might be able to be used for something else. I'm sorry y'all, I'm thirsty. So, our little holder is made. We can start adding stuff in and it's it really should have been up just like a quarter of an inch but that's okay or even centered it I could have put it to where this um, came right about there but for my first one this is pretty good I am gonna put my little tags on while I'm thinking about who I'm gonna put where And I try to keep their names with their um, with their stuff. So that it makes it much easier. But I do like using these dangles as markers. So Melina and some others have done some videos on these dangles, and I did one. Um, but I really got mine more from Melina. And they can work out as a good organizational thing, too. My bookmarks. I don't know if you can see them. They just sit there. What I am going to do while I'm thinking about it is I'm going to put, um, and I could have done like I did on that other book, the grommets. I just decided not to on this one. Um, I'm going to put a grommet right here. Actually, I want it a little bit further in. I'm wondering, you know, I might just cut a little square. I have a little piece. Stick 
go right in that little spot. Yeah, I'm gonna glue that and then a little bit shorter. And if you like me and you don't know how to use your cut machine, I like that little one because it, it works just right. So let me see. I can do this since I didn't. You have to open your little. take and glue this on there just to give it some more stability. I think I'm going to do it on the inside. Will it fit? Of course not. Why I have glue on my scissors? So I'm just going to glue it on the inside. I think it looks a little better. And then we'll put the grommet on. And I actually might, if I use this um, file folder, depending on how it goes, I might would put a, reinforce that with a, a spine. I don't know. Yep, that looks pretty good. So, we have we put a dangle there we need to dress up the front we got dangles here that are not behaving there we go maybe it's the beads oh y'all are like come on now i'm gonna try and get some of this out because i know i'm already up to probably an hour by now probably two hours by now. And if you decided that you were um, that you wanted to put more things in here, you could. Let me see what I got in my Tracy labels. So, like those are going to be a little deep to go down in that. could stay right there. See? That's why I was thinking the one inch would work a little better. But you got these big ones right here that definitely fit in. Let's see if I can coordinate anything. Probably not. Put you right there for now. Yeah, I think I would go with a one inch on most of these because see, it's going to be sticking out up there though. So yeah, I would probably try and go down to one inch on another one for these particular ones. Now, it depends on what you're putting in it. So you could make them bigger and I could do, do that. There's some tiny ones somewhere. So I'm trying to put these kind of coordinated in by the let um, the font. I guess I could do color. When I see here's the little itty bitty ones I was thinking about for that, which actually works really good. Fits just perfect. Yeah. I should put years in one category. So this is where it becomes a problem. <laughs> Trying to figure out where to put these because I have a 
something with the font. Here's some years. There's numbers. It needs to go right there, I think. This one can go right there for now. So I'm, I'm sure y'all don't need to watch me do all this. So I'm going to continue working on putting these in there. And I'll be back in a few minutes.